Thanks again for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel That Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, the Gospel That Saves Your Never Dying Soul, the Gospel of the Grace of God. And that is, and I'm going to tell you right now, and I've been telling you for since this ministry has been operating, the Gospel of the grace of God is not found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The gospel of the grace of God is not found from Hebrews to Revelation. The gospel of the grace of God is not Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That is the gospel of the kingdom. There is nothing in it about being saved. It is about sin being remitted, Israel's sins being remitted, and the receiving of the Holy Ghost. Paul's gospel of the grace of God is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Not in Matthew, not in Mark, not in Luke, not in John. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, if you don't trust that Christ died for your sins and rose again on the third day, then you're not saved. Okay, It has nothing to do with your behavior. It has everything to do with what Christ did on Calvary's cross. That's what saves your never-dying soul. But if you have, like I was talking to a gentleman the other day, if you have a God box, and this is by Daryl Fusaro, and you'll see this at dailyword.com. Okay, What is a God box? The God box, although effective at solving any problem you may have, may seem silly or at best too simple to be for real. But for those for us who have tried it, we are unanimous. It works. A God box is any container with a slot or opening on top. You write your current problem, worry, desire, or hard to make decision on a small piece of paper, then fold it up and put it in your God box. In essence, you are turning it over to God. Personally, I include the date and end all my requests with the statement, this or something better. I believe it to be the intention of, if it be thy will, this keeps my request in the affirmative and puts my mind in a state of expectancy. Your request is for guidance. I suggest you include, make it obvious. Ask for a definite lead and you will receive one. When my wife Lori and I were deciding whether or not to move with our two cats from New York City to Southern California, a friend from California suggested we live in either Marina del Rey or Santa Monica. Never having been to either and still in New York, I put a request for guidance in my God box, ending it with, and make it obvious. The next day, while Lori was at work, she mentioned us contemplating moving to Southern California. One of our co-workers enthusiastically exclaimed, The best place my husband and I ever lived was this apartment complex in Marina del Rey. You must live there. She gave Lori the number. We called the funniest thing. They had a one-bedroom coming available in 30 days. It matched our budget, and they accepted pets. We made the move. Writing down my request and putting it in my God box enables me to feel like I've done my part in turning it over. This physical activity gives me a concrete sense that I've actually turned it over to a higher power. Now, is it God or is it a higher power? Because now we're going into AA. And I have my 24-hour-a-day book right next to me. But the King James Bible also talks about a higher power. Did you know that? It also gives me a positive reference for when I catch myself getting concerned again. I simply remind myself that I put that concern in my God box and everything will transpire in divine order with perfect timing, effortlessness, and ease. So this person has this God box. Why is it that they're putting in the box where I should move? Why don't they put world peace in the box? 
why don't why don't they put everyone gets a million dollars in the box why don't they put everybody's illnesses are healed in the box God couldn't answer those prayers in the God box when people are driven by circumstances and they don't know their position in Christ, this is what you get. When people are in Israel's program and they don't understand that there's a body of Christ, the church, the body of Christ, this is what you get. You get things that are made up outside of your Bible, God box, and you have put people putting notes in their God box, just like a wish list, right? Just like the wish list you give to Santa Claus, and we are approaching that time, aren't we? And, you know, your wish list asks Santa Claus for everything that you want. And then suddenly you wake up the next morning and it's all under the tree. Oh gosh, just like the God box, right? If you are driven by circumstances, then I'm going to tell you right now, you are a child of the prince and the power of the air, Ephesians chapter 2, because he's all about your circumstances. Okay, because this is a present evil world, Galatians chapter 1. And we are to redeem the time because it's evil, Ephesians chapter 5. And if you think that God, the God of the Bible, maybe the God in your small little mind is, is helping you with your little God box, but it's not the God of the Bible, okay? It is not the Lord Jesus Christ that is answering anything from your God box, okay? Paul made it very clear he did not know what to pray for. Paul made it very clear that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us in prayer. And that our prayers, we are to be thankful. That's the will of God. Thankful. Well, thankful for what? That he's given us everything in heavenly places, Ephesians 1, 3. That we have peace with God, Romans 5, 1. That he died for my sins. I'm going to tell you right now, dear listener, if you think God is doing anything in your circumstances, then you are trusting the God of Calvin. You are tr trusting the God of Jacobus Arminius. You are trusting the God that was back there in Israel's time past, and you are trusting God that's in Israel's future, where he blesses them according to their covenant works. And that's what's amazing, too, about these people. They don't even understand Israel's program. It was always according to the covenant works. It was always according to the law covenant. And that's how they get their blessing. Anything that you write down in your God box has nothing to do with a law covenant. It has everything to do with your selfish, sinful desires. And that's sad. Trust that the Lord Jesus Christ paid for your sins and you will be saved. Trusting anything you write in that God box is what you will write down. And then I would encourage you that whatever you write down at the top of the page for the header write down why I'm going to hell because that is the exact reason you are going to hell because you are asking the God of the Bible in your ignorance to answer ignorant prayers when he's not doing that today. And so it's no doubt when I was talking to that person, he said he was God's box. And that's where this story comes from, the God box. The God box is not biblical. The God box is not the God of the Bible. The God box is somebody's wish list of circumstantial preconceptions that will lead your never dying soul to hell. And that is the dailyword.com. Check it out. If you want to learn everything that's not biblical, if you want to learn everything that's not about the Lord Jesus Christ, that's where you go, okay? And so, if you are that same pastor that's preaching the God box, then you're probably the same pastor that claims that God loves the sinner and hates the sin, right? 
because that's the title of this message. And if you are a pastor that claims that, then again, you are not a pastor that believes their Bible. You are not a pastor that understands rightly dividing the word of truth. You are not a pastor that understands the revelation of the mystery. You are not a pastor, I'm going to say, that's even saved. You are a pastor, just like the God box, who's trusting your circumstances as your soul's salvation. I was in a car wreck, and God woke me up, and now I'm walking like a Christian, and I turned from my sin, and I got water baptized, and now I know why I dropped into hell. And so, when you look at 2 Corinthians 1.9, Paul writes to the Corinthians this. And I don't have the verse reference written down, but I'm going to look it up here for you. 2 Corinthians 1.9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raiseth the dead. So, if God loves the sinner and hates the sin then why did we have the sentence of death in ourselves? That's because, again, you're trusting somebody in the pulpit that doesn't understand his Bible. It is important to see how the Bible operates. It operates just like a novel, one chapter after the other. In Genesis chapter 1, everything was good with God. But by chapter 3, Adam and Eve no longer believed what God said and believed the lie of the devil. Sin entered in, God cursed everything, and brought forth death. Oh, is that what Paul was talking about in 2 Corinthians 1.9? The sentence of death? By chapter 5, we are no longer created in God's image, but in sinful Adam's. And that's key to note because when you look at the pictures of Adam and Eve by people who painted them that don't believe their Bible, that are probably not saved, you will see that they have belly buttons. Adam and Eve has belly buttons. But that's not the case. Adam and Eve were not born from the womb. That's after sin enters in. That's how you and I are born, created in the image of sinful Adam of the image of my mom, my dad, right? My sinful mom and dad. And people miss this. Adam was created from the dust. I'm not created from the dust. Eve was created from Adam's rib. Okay? My wife, my mom wasn't created from Adam's rib rib. My mom, my wife, was created from her mom and the womb and her dad. Do you get it? Do you understand progressive revelation? God's not creating people the same way he created Adam and Eve today. And all those paintings of Adam and Eve with belly buttons is wrong. There's no umbilical cord when you're created from the dust, and there's no umbilical cord when you're created from a rib. So by definition of what is going on today since God cursed us and the earth since Genesis chapter 3, Paul again gives us key verses of our condition and the earth. Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. That's why you die, people. Because of your sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, where does your good and bad behavior come in when it comes to sin? It doesn't. And that's why you have to trust that Christ died for your sins because that has nothing to do with your good and bad behavior either. Notice sin is what causes our death. 
Not bad behavior. We are born into sin. Psalm 51.5 Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Nothing about created being created by the dust. Nothing about being created by a rib. Okay? What does Paul say about our world today? So, in sin... Our mothers conceived us, by definition from Israel's program in Psalm 51.5. We're getting definition from that verse, okay? Every verse in your Bible has three applications. Definition, historical, spiritual, and doctrinal, okay? And we can get definition from Israel's program. We go to Paul's writings, which is the but now, which is the gospel of the grace of God, which is the dispensation of God's grace. What does Paul say about our world today? Oh, it's great. We could throw anything in a box and God will answer it. And, you know, I'll just put everything on my wish list and Santa will answer it. And I'll just put a tooth under my pillow and the tooth fairy will give me money. I mean, do you see where all this is coming from? It's not Bible, okay? It's not even the God of the Bible. It's the fairy tales, it's the philosophy and vain deceit, it's the tradition of men, it's the rudiments of the world, Colossians 2.8. So what, again, what does Paul say about our world today? It's evil, people. It's not good, okay? Galatians 1.4, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. The will of God. What's the will of God? That some are predestined to heaven and some are predestined to hell, like John Calvin would have you believe? Or is it that all men will be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. That God will have all men to be saved. That's God's will today. Ephesians 5.16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Deliver us from this present evil world. The days are evil. Ephesians 6.13, wherefore take unto the whole armor of God. Why would I take on the whole armor of God? That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. What does Hebrews say about death and who is the author of it? Again, we go to Hebrews who is written to who? Is it written to the body of Christ? Or is it written to Hebrews? Did Paul write Hebrews? Then he is writing contrary to what he wrote in his 13 epistles, that you can lose your salvation in Hebrews chapter 9 and 10. When he writes in Colossians that you're complete, when he writes in Ephesians that you're accepted in the Beloved, but yet you think he wrote Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2 will clear that up for you if you think Paul wrote Hebrews because you're believing, again, the headline, the header in your Schofield Study Bible where it says Paul wrote the epistle to the Hebrews when Hebrews is written to Hebrews, okay, not the church, the body of Christ. But anyway, we know sin equals death. We go to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 for definition. We know sin equals death. Right? We just went through those verses. And the devil caused Adam and Eve to sin. Right? He laid forth the stumbling block. Right? Adam and Eve had enough knowledge to say no to the devil, but they chose not to. Right? But no, God made Adam and Eve sin. Right? God made the devil and made him sin. Right? No, that was a choice that they made. That was a choice that they made. For as much, Hebrews 2.14, And the devil caused Adam and Eve to sin, so the author of death should be the devil. Let's see what Hebrews says. Hebrews 2.14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Who has the power of death? That is the devil. 
So when you go to a funeral, and I already talked about this in my funeral messages, you go to a funeral and most of these ignoramus pastors who never read a Bible are there and they're telling you that you're going to be in a mansion or they're telling you that you're in a better place when you died, when the author of death is the devil. So again, if you're not trusting what Christ did, it's not according to your bad or good behavior, you're not going to be in that better place. You're not going to be in heavenly places. You will remain here in earth, rotting, just like your corpse, only it's going to be really, really hot. And, and you'll be like a little worm where the fire is never quenched. Right? That's where your soul will go. Your body will be rotten with the worms in the ground, and your soul will be in hell. Okay? So get this right. Okay? If you're trusting your pastor that God created you, that's wrong. The Bible makes it clear that that's wrong. If you're trusting your pastor that you just put anything in a God box and God will answer your wish list, that's wrong because Paul says he doesn't even know what to pray for. Why? Because he's been given everything. Ephesians 1, 3, you've been giving all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. When you trust, Romans chapter 6, the Holy Ghost baptism that places you into the body of Christ without water. Because you trust Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Not because you trusted the God box, not because you trusted your wish list, and not because you trusted your pastor in telling you that you were created in God's image and God creates no junk. It's all wrong. Okay? All wrong. Just like God works in mysterious ways. Show me where it says that in your Bible. So when you're trusting all the wrong statements and not your Bible, when you're trusting your ignorant pastor and not your Bible, this is what happens. You get mad at me. You get mad at me because I'm telling you what the Bible says. I'm going to tell you right now that most people, when you become a Bible believer, especially in the so-called Christian realm, American Christianity, which is really churchianity, you will not be liked simply because you're stating what the Bible says according to mid-Acts dispensational Pauline right division of your King James 1769 Bible. They will never talk to you. They will run out of the room after you speak with them, and you'll never hear back from them again. And guess what? You did your job right. I had a person say that when I told them that their soul probably isn't saved because they don't understand the gospel with clarity, they, un they accept Jesus in their heart, they accept Jesus as their Savior, they have to confess with their mouth, they have to tithe, they trust in the death, burial, and resurrection, I'm going to say that person does not know how his soul is saved. And that person's in trouble. But when you tell somebody that and they say, that's harsh, Tom. That's not really loving. But really, love is speaking the truth. Don't get those two mixed up. If I didn't love that person, I wouldn't care enough to tell him that his soul is on, his way, on its way to hell. Do you get it? If I didn't care about that person, I wouldn't tell him. If I didn't love that person, I wouldn't tell him. And you know what? The challenge I gave to that person, and this person still goes to Harvest Translation Chapel, the challenge I gave to that person last week was this. Let me know how many people care about your soul and where it goes when you die. Let me know how many people talk to you about it at that place they call Harvest Translation Chapel. They don't have a Bible. That's why I call it Harvest Translation Chapel. And they don't understand the gospel with clarity, just like all their campus pastors and all their pastors. None of them have a clear testimony that it's the death, burial, and resurrection that saves your never-dying soul. It's always their circumstances. It's their car crash. It's their Aunt Sally yelling at them. It's, it's the God box. So by definition... It is the devil that has the power of death. Then, why is it that at every funeral, they always say the person who died is in a better place? Because they don't understand their Bible. What else are they going to say? 
Rick Warren said, only preach the positive verses in your Bible. And guess what? Isn't that the same thing the devil preached in Genesis chapter 3? He told Adam and Eve they'll be just like God. I mean, how much more positive can you be? Just like the devil. But what about God? Look around at this disgusting world. Do you think God is doing anything today? Well, your evangelical would say that this is God's kingdom, right? Well, like one pastor said, probably the smartest pastor that I've ever known, you need to fire the king because he's not doing a good job here. Look around. Nobody knows their Bible. Nobody knows what the king did on Calvary's cross. Nobody knows how he's operating today. Nobody knows anything about dispensa the dispensations in their Bible. Nobody knows anything about progressive revelation. Nobody knows anything about right division. Nobody knows anything about the translation issue. No one knows anything about the church, the body of Christ. No one knows anything about Israel's fall. But they're building God's kingdom. It's just unbelievable what we're up against as ambassadors, as ministers of reconciliation. My Bible says God is not doing anything today, but the devil is. Who is the God of this world? This cursed, sinful world. Answer, not God, but the devil. And we're going to stop here. And as we continue to figure out why you need a Savior, that God, that cliche, God loves the sinner and hates the sin, how wrong that is, and how wrong churchianity is today, when you put the Bible up against them, not me, okay? When you put the Bible up against scholarship, up against the seminaries, and how they squirm and how they'll never talk to you again. As we come to see who is operating this world today, as we come to see why you need a Savior, and it's not according to your good or bad behavior, my hope is that you put your trust in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection as payment for your sins, your never-dying soul, and that you trust that He died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. Thanks again for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, if you have not, to this channel, to my other YouTube channel. Subscribe to my bookstore blog, where you will see all the textual differences between your 1769 King James Bible and the dumbed-down Westcott and Hort translations of 1881. The Jehovah Witness text is the same text as your New American Standard, and you will see that going through that study. So, subscribe to my bookstore blog, and if you have not yet, check out my study on Ephesians only on my website at preachingthegospelthatsaves.com. Thanks again.